Welcome to the video colored pencils versus pastel pencils on pastel mat on pan pastels. Now in my previous Patreon videos I've done a full video on the colored pencil one and exactly how I achieved that. I've also done a full video on the pastel pencil one and how I've achieved that look. Now as you can see they're both very similar but there are really some quite critical and big differences between the two. So on this video I'm going to point out the differences I found between the coloured pencil version and the pastel pencil version and um, any pitfalls you may want to look out for. Now bear in mind I am absolutely not a coloured pencil expert. My expertise is in pastel pencils and oil painting so take what I say about coloured pencil with a pinch of salt if you're really looking specifically to learn colored pencils I'd recommend my good friend Bonnie Snowden she works just in colored pencils and you really can't beat her lessons so what you're seeing on screen now is the finishing stages of um, both of the drawings I actually went back into the colored pencil one which I did first once I'd seen my finished pastel pencil and boosted the the lighter areas up even more and darkened down some of the other areas just to try and make them even more similar. Okay so this is the photo where I've tried to get them as close to each other as possible. Top one is pastels, bottom one is colored pencils. They do look really really similar under this light in and that's a point I'm going to look at in depth later on but we just keep that into the back of our minds for the moment, the light in that may affect it. On the left you see those three black dots. Now the pencils, colored pencils are never ever going to be as dark a black as pastel pencils. It's just the nature of it. Whether it's right or wrong I'm not concerned about it. I'm just saying it as it is. So we've got two different um, pa uh, colored pencils, those dark gray markings on the top on the left. Polychromos is the top one um, and on the bottom then is a pastel black pencil and I've also put two little marks by the side of the colored pencils above so you can see the difference. Now that's an important thing I think to point out because that means the color or the tonal range sorry the darks to the lightest lights is going to be that bit greater on pastel drawings. That for me gives more impact to them but if you look at them separately so if you took you know a, a colored pencil and a pastel one apart from each other you wouldn't really notice that much difference in the blacks in the impact but once you brought them together then you would notice that difference. But the very first thing I did with both pastel and color pencil demonstrations was to put an under layer in using pan pastels. The reason I did this was because I knew that colored pencils could create a, more of a gritty appearance because of the texture on the pastel matte surface. Now there are ways to get around this by layering and layering and layering with a colored pencil but I, my interest with this demonstration or with this test really was to see if I could use colored pencils in more of a way that I'm familiar with with pastel pencils that made them faster to use. Being a professional artist and doing lots of videos and demonstration videos I really wanted to see if I could use colored pencils and do them faster because otherwise I could never get that many videos out and if I'm taking a long time layering details with colored pencils I personally get a bit bored with it and want to get on to the next subject so it needed to be pretty much as fast as the pastels. To do that I needed to find a way to stop that graininess that would happen with the colored pencils initially and the way around that I thought was going to be put a light layer down of pan pastels. The reason the pan pastels or you could have used uh, light you know very lightly pastel pencils the reason it gets rid of the initial graininess is because it if you think of the paper as having as a mountainscape with peaks and valleys 
we need to get some pigment down into the low valleys, the tooth of the paper, that's because that's what's causing the graininess otherwise. If we put colored pencil just on the peaks of the mountains, we'd still see the pastel matte paper color down in the valleys, if that makes sense. So pan pastel is a really quick way of doing that. So I did that on both demos, the pastel one and the colored pencil one in exactly the same way. And then on top of that, I began to add my details. This is the colored pencil uh, version. I started on the colored pencil when I started with the very vibrant side because I knew that was going to be the tricky thing to get right with the colored pencil. I wasn't sure if the pencils would even have the vibrancy to get that because it is very extreme in this case. And I wasn't even sure how well pencils would layer because if you use a traditional type of way of drawing on normal paper then you're you know working from uh, light to dark really with colored pencils That's the opposite we do with pastels and you've got to do things like reserve areas draw around areas that you want to be extremely light and that's what takes lots of time working negatively basically so I didn't want to do that really with the colored pencil or I wanted to keep that way of working down to an absolute minimum. So I kept layering and layering the details on top, putting the darker uh, texture in first and then putting the highlights on top. And as you can see on this part of the video, it came out really, really well. The colors were reasonably vibrant as well. And there was no real trouble getting the um, lighter details on top of the darks. Now with the pastel drawing I could do the same, I could very easily put lights on top of darks. I knew that from my you know years of, of working with them and I was surprised as I mentioned earlier on how similar they turned out but there was definitely um, a difference in the ability to put the opaque pastels on top of the underlayer because the colored pencils are not as opaque as uh, pastel pencils, it's just the, the nature of, of them. So in this way, paper color act is more critical with um, colored pencils. And if I was going to do a subject that was very, very vibrant, then in future I would use the light gray pastel matte paper. So you've got more chance of uh, getting that vibrancy. That's if I was using colored pencils. With pastel pencils, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so even though they're very similar, as I said, there are obvious differences. So let me just go through what I think my own personal findings. Advantage with colored pencil, there's no dust at all. You may get a few uh, bits of the pencil um, color pigment floating around on the paper a bit, but no dust. Pastel, obviously we do have a bit of dust, but as you've seen in this video, the dust when you use my techniques is very, very minimal at all. You probably don't even see anything at all because pastel matte paper really grabs into the surface and um, pan pastels as well don't create a lot of, of dust. And don't forget, the way I used colored pencils did actually use some form of pastel because I wanted to get rid of that graininess. Regarding smudging of the paper or of the drawing, people assume that colored pencil won't smudge like pastel. Once again, using pastel matte paper, it does grab the pigment well with both of them. There is obviously less smudging with colored pencil though, so you know, that's something to keep in mind. But with the finished drawing, if I actually rub the colored pencil, I'd still smudge it. Um, so, you know, don't think it's completely fixed and you couldn't, you know, you could touch the surface however you wanted. You can't. The advantage though with smudging, with pastels, is that I can get lovely blends uh, very easily just by touching the surface with my finger or, or rubbing it in with a, a stump or, or something like that. I can do it a lot easier than with colored pencils and as I said I'm not a colored pencil expert so I'm not trying to call colored pencils over I'm trying to be as objective as I can just showing what I found 
myself. But as a, a predominantly wildlife artist, the, f the ability to create softness uh, very easily by rubbing the surface, that's, that's a really big advantage for me. Regarding the tonal range, remember I said about that, pastels have definitely got a wider tonal range. They are more opaque. Now, something many people just don't mention is the way light reacts with these pastel pencils or colored pencils. The pastel is the one at the top and I've just turned the camera so the light is hitting slightly different on the surface. You can see on the bottom on the colored uh, pencil one how the light is affecting the drawing because of the shininess of the surface. Now remember the colored pencils are either oil based or wax based. That's why we get in this light bouncing back. With the pastels it's more like a dust and no matter how I move the surface under whatever light it'll always look uh, contrasty like that and you won't get any light bouncing around. Now this is the same type of thing you get with graphite pencils that can look fantastic when you're looking directly onto them in good light but then if you have a bit of side light or top light or something then you can get this shine on the surface. Now for some people this may not make any difference whatsoever. For me personally it's a it's a big deal. I really like it looking completely matte um, and this all adds then to that greater feeling of the darks being darker. Okay so this is also why I don't put a lot of colored pencil into my pastel work. At least not in big areas. So it's not so bad on the little fine haze. You don't notice it as much but where you've got like blocks of color so in the eye or in the black areas around the eye that's where you get this glaring light um, bouncing back. So if I use colored pencils more in my pastel work for details at the end I make sure it's only for fine details and not any large blocks of color because then you'll get the matteness of the pastel with the shine of the colored pencil which is going to look terrible. Okay so what else have we got to talk about? Um, the pastel for me personally is still much quicker so that's that's a really good advantage. The colored pencil even with the pan pastel underneath becomes more of a grainy look to the finished drawing. I wonder if I could keep adding layer upon layer upon layer the smoothness would come like I get quite quickly with the pastels but I don't want to be working like that as I said earlier on I don't want to be spending lots and lots of time building up loads and loads of layers to get the same effect I can get um, in a fraction of the time with the pastels that just doesn't make sense to the way I work. One big advantage that colored pencil get is that it's easier to sharpen your pencils. So I used the same crank handle sharpener with the colored pencils as I did with the pastel pencils. It's a um, swordfish icon sharpener. It did both perfectly well but you can definitely absolutely get colored pencils much sharper than pastel pencils and a lot of people make the mistake with pastel pencils by sharpening them way too much and then they complain about them snapping so that's that's again uh, an advantage for the colored pencils. So what it all comes down to is I've, I've shown you that it can be done in both ways and it's personal preference. You can mix and match them up to you and they both work really well with the pan pastel under layer. Okay so it really is personal preference but I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if so please remember to subscribe and like the video. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. 
but it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned I've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.